We've been telling you that Republicans would take a page from the Karl Rove playbook and start attacking the president exactly where he is at its strongest. And now they are. The old swift boat captain is back at the helm, this time accusing the president of spilling intelligence secrets for the sake of political gain. This is unseemly to take the, the secrets of the United States government and reveal them for partisan political purposes to get himself reelected. I mean, it's really astonishing. Yes, it is astonishing to see the same people, the same tactics, the same hypocrisy. All these years later, Karl Rove was the key political operative in a White House that used bogus and often leaked intelligence to start a war. Yes, to start an unnecessary war that cost the lives lives of almost 4,500 American fathers, mothers, sisters and brothers. It's absolutely astonishing that Karl Rove has the temerity to show up with Mr. Sean Hannity and level these charges against the White House. And to do so without ever revealing that he's the brains behind a $100 million super PAC aimed at the president's defeat. Karl Rove, the architect, thanks for being with us as uh, always. Good to see you. Great. Thanks, Sean. The architect, indeed. There you have it. Now let's welcome back our panel, Ken Vogel, Dana Milbank and Joy Reid. Dana, Republican Senator John Cornyn has called on Attorney General Eric Holder to resign because of these leak allegations. Let's take a listen to what Carl Rose said about Mr Cornyn last night on Fox News. He's a former Supreme Court justice. In fact, he spent, I, I think, about 20 years on the bench. He has a very keen understanding of the tension between the legislative branch and the executive branch and a very keen understanding of the law. He is not a man to make rash or intemperate remarks. OK, first off, Mr. Cornyn was not a Supreme Court justice. He served on the Texas Supreme Court for six years, not 20. And he is given to making intemperate statements. In fact, he justified violence against judges during the Ch uh, Terry Schiavo case. And now he's pulling another stump with Mr. Holder. Is that right? Well, I think so. I mean, you know, and in fairness, I don't suspect anybody tuning into Fox News and seeing Karl Rove is going to say, oh, is he with the Brookings Institution? I mean, they know who this guy is uh, and where he's been before. And the irony is even uh, richer than you say, because, of course, he came within a whisker of being indicted in the Valerie Plame case, which is rather similar to this. Now, you know, the substance aside, even Democrats in the intelligence committees on Capitol Hill are saying they are troubled by uh, uh, what's going on here. Uh, but it, it's, it's, of course, being taken a step further now, uh, and it's particularly rich, not so much in John Cornyn's case, but in uh, Karl Rove's case, to be, uh, uh, to be making these claims. Isn't, Joy, it also not just particularly rich, as Dana says, but dishonest of Rove to appear on a television program without disclosing his role up front as this kingpin behind this super PAC that's amassing so much money behind the Republican candidate. It would be except on that network, and I'll just leave it at that as far as that's concerned. But, I, you know, I have to tell you, Dana took the words out of my mouth. I was literally stunned listening to Karl Rove speak. This is the guy who had to go in time after time after time to stop himself getting indicted. And the Valerie Plame case, lest we forget, was about attempting to go after uh, the wife, the secret operative wife who worked for the CIA, of, a, of, a, of an ambassador that was sent to Africa to find out if really Iraq was trying to acquire nuclear material from Niger. This was about covering up the, the biggest intelligence blunder or the biggest intelligence sham that we've had in modern history, the idea that we went to war based based on the idea that Iraq was getting nuclear weapons and leaking a CIA operative's name. This is unreal that he could even talk, speak the word leak. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Ken, when are we going to start seeing ads about this leaked story from Karl Rove's super PAC? Didn't he just unleash another major buy in nine states? You know, I actually would not be surprised to see ads either from uh, super PACs or outside groups associated with Karl Rove or others. Let's not forget, Democrats should sit up and take notice any time Karl Rove says anything that suggests a strategy or attack in the presidential or congressional races, because not only does he have this role, albeit an unofficial one, with American Crossroads and the non-disclosing uh, uh, nonprofit cousin of it, Crossroads GPS, but he also is the unofficial leader of this vast network 
this coordinated network of these other outside groups that get together once a month, sometimes more frequently, to di discuss strategy and actually discuss divvying up individual races and ad buys so that they're not overlapping or stepping on each other's toes. As for whether they would focus on the leak uh, as a political issue, on the one hand, I could see it. It kind of plays into this idea that they've been trying to put forward that President Obama is out of his depth, that he's nakedly political. On the other hand, though, any time that you raise the leak, it gets back to the substance of the leak, which is the killing of Osama bin Laden. That's a good issue for President Obama and not for Republicans. Indeed. Dana, our friends on Fox News also say that the president and his alleged leaks are to blame for the 33-year jail sentence, which was imposed on a Pakistani doctor who helped the president kill Osama bin Laden. Take a listen. There's a man sitting in jail for 33 years based on the gross negligence of the Obama administration in keeping secrets. It's pretty frightening. And who's going to want to, who's, who's going to, want to trust us in the future? Dana, I think what's frightening is how fast and loose they play with the truth, because that Pakistani doctor they're mentioning, he was imprisoned because of his ties to terrorist groups. So my question to you, why is Rudy Giuliani crying crocodile tears for someone who supports terrorists? It, it's almost like when the party switches power in the White House, everybody trades scripts and starts uh, exchanging <laughs> the accusations the other way. Because, of course, we were hearing the very same things uh, directed at the Bush administration and, and one uh, Karl Rove before that. Uh, so, you know, these things will be resolved in, the, uh, in, in ways that we probably won't hear about uh, in the intelligence committees and in these internal investigations, likely not uh, with a special counsel. But uh, uh, we shouldn't be at all surprised that they're bringing this out in the context of a campaign. In fact, the only surprise is that that ad that you mentioned hasn't been cut already. <laughs> Indeed, it's being cut even as we speak. Ken Vogel, Dana Milbank and Joy Reid, thanks so much for joining us.